Hello students, this is Mr. Stewart from Fossil Ridge Intermediate School Math 17 bringing you the 4.5 homework quiz all about solving for inequalities um, multi-step but the, the key word is distribution. We're, we're including distribution in here because it was it's such an important thing to know how to do for future things. So we did a whole new quiz just with distribution. So here is your quiz. It says distribute then solve. Now there's other ways to solve this. There's other ways to do this, but um, I, I, I suppose we could you could kind of approach this with um, if you wanted to undo this multiplication you could by dividing both sides by three first um, and that's actually a very smart way to do this but uh, also to keep things simplified we've sort of just decided to just stick with one idea and that is distribute first then solve so it's a little bit more work but it is good practice so x times 2 is 2x and uh, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 now this is one I've made up so you can approach this similarly to the left but this is just how I've done it and hopefully and the big deal is you need to have passed the 4.4 quiz you have to do this first. If you were unable to pass a 4.4 quiz, then the 4.5 quiz is just going to be more of the same with additional steps. So you have to make sure you keep track of each step. So once you distribute, this just becomes a two-step inequality. We're always going to undo the additive inverse stuff first. So undo, oh, I'm sorry, uh, undo this negative 8 here by adding 8 to both sides. And that makes things simple. That counts as that, and I'm left with 2x is less than or equal to 28. Now, <clears throat> this is multiplication, so to undo multiplication, we divide. Divide both sides by 2, and you're left with x is less than or equal to a 14. That's what I got here. You'll want to solve for your own over here. All right. So again, solve for the inequality. We would recommend that you that you distribute first, but you could also so this could be distributed here and here, or you could undo this multiplication of a negative three halves by dividing both sides by negative three halves first. Again, I don't want to confuse people, so I'm going to stick with just one approach to this in this video. And then, if you want to see other approaches or other ways to do this that might be a quicker, more efficient way. Um, then just make sure that uh, you participate in our class discussions because we will go over those as well. I've made up my own example on this right-hand side right here. And so uh, I'll just kind of go with this. If we're going to distribute first, uh, even other fractions, fractions can be distributed into numbers and variables just the same. So a negative one-half times f is going to be just a negative one-half f and negative one half times a positive four is just going to be a negative two. Okay, so negative times a positive is a negative, a negative two. And everything else comes down. Now I'm going to undo I'm going to undo this negative two first by adding two to both sides. And that looks like it's going to cancel out nicely, and that actually goes to zero as well. So I'm left with zero, and the inequality st still comes down, and negative one half is is uh, less than negative one half times f is less than zero. Well, just because it's zero doesn't mean that anything's wrong with this. Right? We can still do this. Right? In my case, uh, this is multiplication, and to undo multiplication, we divide both sides that number. This will be an easy division for me. That goes away and I'm left with f. Now as soon as I divide by a negative, what happens to the inequality? Changes direction. So that actually oops, that changes the direction. That only happens when I multiply or divide by a negative number. And so 0 divided by anything is just going to be 0 and so I'm left with that f is greater than 0. When you type this in, I'm going to just make sure it's very clear. When you're typing in the answers here, make sure you use f as the variable. Don't use a different variable. Do a lowercase f, and then use the symbols right here, the inequality symbols, and then make sure you include the number 
uh, do that all in that order and you should be just fine. Okay, in okay, this one, it says solve the inequality and then match the graph, the correct graph the, that, that, that matches the solution set here. That's important to understand. The first two, we didn't ask you to graph the solution set, although we could have. But in this one, we're actually asking you, you, you'll have to find the solution set as an inequality and then find out which graph matches your, uh, your, your inequality, your solution set. And so just to remember that solution sets can be represented graphically is very important. Right? So that's, that's major. So I made up one of my own on the right here. And again, I, you know, sometimes I would, sometimes I wouldn't, but in this case, it would be probably easier actually to distribute. And so I'm going to do a, a one third times nine m. So one third times nine m should be three m. And then a one third times, remember, distribution is multiplication times a positive six is going to be a positive two. Then I bring everything else down. I rewrite the inequality. Okay. Now, let's see. In this case, I'm going to uh, undo the, the positive 2 first by subtracting 2 from both sides. And that will give me 3m is greater than or equal to a negative 10. Because you know, every number is just being added together. A negative plus a negative will continue being a negative. And so now I have to undo this multiplication. 3 multiplied by m, which is uh, division. Okay, And so I'm going to be getting uh, the, the m is greater than or equal to a negative 10 thirds, or I could call it 3 and a third, whatever you'd like to call that, or 3.33, doesn't matter to me. But here's your solution. Now the idea would be to graph this, right? So um, if I was looking at this, this answer right here is the starting point of my inequality. And the inequality itself informs me that it is partially, m is partially equal to, or one of the solutions could be equal to a negative 3 and 1 third, so I'm going to actually fill in the inequality. And, and that, that closed circle implies that negative 3 and a third is part of the solutions, just like many of you have written in your discussions. Now, m is anything that's also bigger than a negative 3 and 1 third, and so the direction on the number line is going to take me that way. Now, it's going to be up to you to decide which inequality represents this. Um, but uh, hopefully, hopefully yours, you know, mine's going to be different, so remember, you just base it on what you're seeing here, but go ahead and solve it first. Okay, question number four is a step-by-step -step sort of matching, um, and so you'll want to read these carefully. There's, there's no way I'm going to be able to make up my own and just kind of talk to you about it. I mean, I guess, I guess I could, but they're basically the same questions that we've just done in the last week as well. So here's your inequality, and it's asking you, it says, type the letter from the answer in the blank space by each step. So uh, what that means is, you know, if if step one were A, then you would type A here and it would match it up. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm just saying that's how it works. And so if you're thinking about it, just remember we have taught to keep things sort of orderly. We've taught to do the distribution first. And then remember, uh, order of operations is one thing, but inverse operations, so inversing all of those operations, it kind of starts us from the bottom up and we work our way that way. So as you read through each one of these, this one says switch the inequality sign. So you got to think like when is it appropriate to switch the inequality sign? At what point do we do that? Uh, this one says distribute. So at what point would it be appropriate to distribute before we do anything else? And it says use the inverse operation of positive 1, which is negative 1. So like at what point, at what step along the way would it be appropriate to do that? And then use the inverse operation of multiplying by a negative 4, which is divide by a negative 4. So like at what point would we be doing that? If you can match those up with each step along the way, then that should be good. I believe this will give you partial credit for having some of them in place. Uh, but you know, ultimately the goal would be to understand 
each step and where it belongs. If you're going to do that, then that should be good, and that is your quiz. Hope this was helpful for you. Have a good day.